Good evening, all. I would like to call this facility's meeting to order and begin with a roll call. Ms. Murphy, please turn aside. Robin Murphy, present. Ross Whiting, present. Liam Elhart, present. Dan Schultz, present. Mia Bloodstein, present. Jennifer Lemon, present. Zachary Epps, present. Excellent. Next, uh, we will ask for mm -hmm. approval of minutes from our August 6th facilities meeting. Can I get a motion to approve? So moved. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Lovely. And now I would like to turn the meeting over to Mr. Holman. Thank you. Um, I would like to welcome everyone to, to this uh, to service committee meeting. Next slide, please. <laughs> Beginning on a high note, on Friday, August 16th, we held our second annual Facilities Appreciation Breakfast, which was highlighted with a visit from Shelham Heights, Shelham School Board President Pam Henry and Superintendent Dr. Brian Scripp. In the photo, you see Gassel Martin, more affectionately known as Ms. C, who is the lead custodian at Myers Elementary, and also Damian Stevens, who is a custodian at the high school who both shared in perfect attendance for the year. They received jackets for the dedication to the district, their respective schools, and also the facilities of art. Next slide, please. As we talk about budgeting for projects and end of life components, as we talk about how to better utilize available funding and not have surprises in regards to system failures. While you can never truly budget for component failures, it is nice to have a warning something is approaching end of service life. Some things are preventable. This facilities condition assessment, also known as FCA, is just one tool that we have at our disposal that does this for the district. It has set industry standards for end of life components, which is shown by a priority score. That's that high, um, where that red arrow is pointing to. Uh, the, the more, the higher the score, the the higher the priority, the more likely the component will fail. We began using the system in this manner when we recommissioned the fire alarm system at the high school. We are also using it for the roof at the high school. It provides additional justification of when to proceed the project. So in our arsenal, we have FMX, which is our work order system, also our preventive maintenance program, along with this Bureau Veritas, we are set up for success. So we can pan out our capital expenditures regarding fair wear and tear. While not perfect, it does give us a baseline to go by. Next slide, please. These are the kilns at the high school. The one on the right was damaged during an electrical fire last year, and the one on the left hasn't worked since 2016. These kilns will be in brand new condition with a little TLC. For $2,100, we're getting both kilns repaired to, quote, good as new condition. This is not me saying this, as I am not a kiln expert. <laughs> this is Dave the Kiln Guy that is saying, just change, just change, I know Dave the Kiln Guy, right? <laughs> just changing the elements of both kilns and the repair to the plug on the one that caught fire last year will make the kilns good as new. Thus saving the dish of over $10,000. The amount in savings is based on what two kilns will cost in an educational setting. Next slide, please. This is the high school tennis course before being cleaned and after being cleaned. Next slide. Gotcha. That's them after being cleaned. So. <laughs> Not All right. So before we leave, this is the first time they've been cleaned in over 20 years. They cost the district just over $6,400 to have all eight courts cleaned. As you see, it was much needed. Next up is Cedar Brook Tennis Courts. Um, next slide. The main lobby of the high school is a focal point due to what it houses. It houses the main office, the Wall of Fame, Stratton Hall, it's the student entrance, the visitor entrance, the senior cafe, 
It is somewhere that we should be proud of, and the terrazzo floors are an integral part of this. The border you see is before the restoration process. See the dullness in reflection? Next slide. And this is a finished product. This is a labor of love. Carl Kirschenman is a floor tech for the high school. He was on site to learn the process until 2 a.m. Carl is being empowered to train the rest of the custodial team on floor care. All of our schools, except for the Miles and Myers, have some sort of terrazzo floor, be it Elvis Park in the lunchroom or CBK in the main corridor. Shout out to Will Littles, the custodial supervisor, for taking the lead on this project. Last year, I'm sorry, next slide, please. Last year, we shared with you the new base receptacles. We are rolling out phase one at Elkins Park Intermediate School and also Cedar Brook Junior High School. This is part of our ongoing commi commitment to sustainability. Next slide. Elkins Park received new student furniture for every classroom. The thought behind this was purchase it now to give to, to give the Elkins Park students something to be proud of. Also, let them know we haven't forgotten about it. Also, it's one less thing to purchase when we're ready to move. Also, it just made sense. Dr. Collins definitely deserves all the credit for this. Next slide. So, I was asked to expand on the hurdy hurdy effort that was undertaken by the facilities department in terms to cleaning out the mines. We have been in the mines, branding up the mines to the EPIC program. Dr. Scriven made it clear to me that I should reiterate and celebrate all the effort that was put forth. This was a task that could not have been accomplished without the help of the entire facilities team. Next slide. The amount of debris that was removed from the building, 13 tons of metal, that's 26,000 pounds of metal that we recycled, close to 240 cubic yards of debris, while we purposing 400 student deaths to the high school. The deaths we purposed alone was monumental. All the moving parts involved in that effort did not go unnoticed. The cooperation with our friends at the township, the hours that were worked by the maintenance, the facility, and the rounds apart. Next slide. These photos only show a snippet of all the work that was done, the hundreds of gallons of paint that was used in the previous project. All of this was completed this summer once we got the go ahead to receive all of our prioritizing the existing needs of the district. When you see the finished product, you see a new chapter in Shellham School District. Next slide. This was a Herculean task, and I wouldn't have done it without with any other team. Yeah. Right, next slide. I end this with yeah, I would play this. Don't play this. <laughs> Don't play. They gave us hash cutters to, to cut the ribbon. Very embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, let me just save everybody. <laughs> this is the end of this. Yeah. yeah. I know this video. So, uh, it, it, we did have a, a, a quick clip that I think was on Channel 6. And uh, I, I will state that uh, Epic has been going extremely well. And there's some there's some incredible testimonies, student testimonies that have already manifested as a result of, of students uh, being in a, a smaller setting and, and getting the more personalized uh, support and wraparound services. So um, it's had an impact on the high school as a, as a whole too. But it, it, there is a correlation, unfortunately, that. A lot of our hall walk walkers were individuals that are now in effort um, and uh, very positive. So I'll keep you guys posted on how they're doing this. So I think that brings closure. Wonderful. Yes. Um, do any board members have any questions? For <laughs> any go. Um, I just wanted to thank you for the, the tennis court. I, I know I've played on those courts. I know that they needed some TLC. Um, did they get new nets too? Two of the nets were replaced, okay. and the other one was just uh, be strong. Uh, and then they put up the uh, the wind streets. Oh, good. Oh, those were also much needed. Great. It's perfect timing for the U.S. Open. <laughs> and the girls tennis and the girls tennis. <laughs> anyone else? 
Um, just a, a comment on Epic. I was able to go to the ribbon cutting and walk around uh, of the school before I, before the ribbon cutting, had to leave quickly after. But it is, the transformation is unbelievable. I was in the mods uh, a couple of years ago and it was obviously very disarray. There's a lot of things stored in there. It feels like a warm and welcoming school. And that's the kind of thing that I think um, was needed in this kind of pivot to this, this environment. I just am really, I just want to give kudos to Mr. Holman, Mr. Holman's team for the work that went into making sure that space was as warm and professional and welcoming as it could possibly be. And also to Dr. Zuberu for her vision, uh, for setting this up and giving our kids another opportunity to, to close um, some of the gaps that they all individually have in that space. Um, and so we'll all be paying attention to it very closely, but um, I am so impressed and uh, is the people in the district that made that possible. And I just wanted to point that out. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. All right, one to follow there. Definitely with appreciation, but second, uh, second appreciation. Uh, on the sustainability note, uh, definitely encouraged to see the, uh, I guess, trash and recycling receptacles throughout. Uh, I wonder what are the opportunities you may already be taking advantage of that, that might exist in the future. I know there was um, at the high school, they had an effort around like awareness, education, and then also like building the, the recycling. So we kind of how to build on that momentum in some way as we push, as the, as, as the facilities team pushes these through, like kind of synergize on, on the awareness piece. Cause I feel like that's huge once they're there or people actually use it. People are using it. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, we're going to do a waste audit soon, very soon. And um, already with the vision that so we have to make sure that they don't get captured yeah. all the data. Exciting. Mm -hmm. And another opportunity we can look for student leadership, student. Uh, exactly. Oh, awesome, awesome, awesome. Go ahead. Uh, just quickly, uh, one, I echo all the statements about Epic. Looks amazing. <laughs> um, you wouldn't even go as a sustainability. Um, and just to thank you uh, regarding the furniture in EP, uh, having a fresh EP student, uh, the kids, the teachers, it was evident they were excited. Um, getting used to what it's like to be rolling around the classroom. <laughs> but, you know, I think they'll figure it out. But no, it definitely sounded like when my child came home, he said the teachers were excited, we were excited, you know. And I think, like you said, like we we have not forgotten about EP. They still get the same attention uh, that you know everyone else will get. Um, and also, just I, the Bureau of Veritas, seeing it laid out like that with the scoring and that format is really helpful. So I am looking forward to seeing how that works in conjunction with everything else to not work smarter, not harder, so that you guys kind of know what what to expect coming Absolutely. down the pipe. Awesome. Thank you. Um, thank you for the presentation. And I have a question about the tennis courts. First off, I feel like whenever we um, are able to finally get to something that hasn't been done in decades, that's a very good sign about things are, are working. What leads to the identification of that type of project? Is it, um, is it that we're using the capital plan? Is it um, bubbled up by Athletics department. How does that work? Public athletics department. Okay. So, because it was just a little dollar value item, it was just makes sense to spend that out. It required the athletic back. So, right. here you came in, gave us the procedure for us because we didn't have the force. So, okay. Thank you. Yep. Actually, I had a follow up based on the uh, Bureau of Vitas. Sorry. Is it, um, yeah, go ahead. I'm just sure. taking notes also. Uh, to what extent will we ever have that information publicly? Uh, if it's not already, um, it's, it's, it's not. Uh, let me work on the figure out how to get the new. Yeah, because not even like not even if it's the system itself, mm -hmm. like log in things like that, but just in terms of because uh, that's very vital information because we had how much budget allocated, 
the million dollars to that to the effort? How much of it do we expect to use? Uh, like, and then like a top here is what's coming up. Like, just that level of information uh, might be helpful for folks who are tracking these processes as well. Moving forward, um, that's going to be captured in these monthly reports, okay. and I, I think that's going to be the best way to make it public knowledge. Yes. Yeah. And we have to make sure I, I shot Mr. Swagger and Ms. Holmes because I don't believe this presentation was attached to board docs. So we need to make sure it's uploaded. Right after the meeting. Okay. And that presentation will serve yeah, as a yeah, yeah. product doc. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Great. Anyone else? Okay, we'll go to the, the public. Anyone here? Have any questions? Can you just stand up and say your name and where you're from in the town? <coughs> yep. Hi, my name is Nava Zizel, and I am from Moonside, Township. Uh, my students just left AD, so they missed all the news. <laughs> so I'm not sure she would have been happy. She said it was horrible. <laughs> she would have liked that. Um, and two kids in uh, high school. So she's now in Seabrook. For the tennis courts, since it took 20 years to clean them, is there going to be a schedule <laughs> on able to do it now that we have to do it? Yes. Okay. So is that a, have y'all, are y'all planning it or have, do you know what it is? It's going to be annual basis. Oh, annual. Okay. That's a good job. Um, and then I had questions about the football field. Um, first, I'd like to thank Dr. Scriven and yourself, whoever, for the communication that you have been giving me. Um, I appreciate it. Most of my questions have been answered, and even when I wanted to acknowledge that, because um, we always come complaining, but I would like to acknowledge when things are going well in that. Um, I'd like to also acknowledge I see progress. The color guard was practicing on the field today, and I have daughter in color guard as well, so it's nice that they're not on the park lot in the dark at eight o'clock at night. So I do appreciate that also. The football team is not playing on the field, so it's still not there. Is there a, what is, I haven't heard what the, what it looks like now. I mean, what the projection is, or you don't have one. No, I do. Not good. Uh, not good. Okay. So I just wanted to update on sure. how, what, you know, I know somebody came out, looked at it, and said it wasn't good. So what does it look so, like? Now? So it's been ongoing. Um, the areas where there were the um, those sinkholes mm -hmm. are the areas that are giving us the blues. Okay. Um, this will be tomorrow. Will probably be the third time that sod has been or attempted to be laid. We're going to look at doing a put a pivot potentially when we work with them to just see if seed mm -hmm. can be put down rather than the sod in those areas. In the larger areas, the sod has taken extremely well. Um, this Saturday, um, which would have been a Friday, we, we're going to be able to hit it. The following I've already shared with AD, Flurry, the range will be able to hit it. There's no need because there's no guarantees. You guys identify that when we started down this path with sod that potentially was going to be hitting this. Um, we're working on that timeline that you asked for, which we will probably have in October. Um, this will be the only time that we will have to go through this because the yeomans of the work, the bulk of the work will happen in the spring for both the uh, stadium field and also the bleachers. So that will be ready by next football season based on what I have right now. So we're just limping through um, game by game. My, my goal is I really want them to be able to have the homecoming on their on their own field without having to play somewhere else and definitely senior night. So that's what that's what we're really shooting for. So what's the hit game for the following week? We're still looking at Saturday games so. though. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And if the work is done during the spring, will that affect our track? Track yeah, this one will affect track. So they won't be doing that work. They won't have home track. Yeah. We're gonna no. have to figure out what that's going to look like. Do you think that will last the whole track season? Or yes. Track season? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am.
Thank you. Anybody else? Um, Taryn Mack, other than Elkins Park. Um, so we know the next two games are going to be away in the city of Um How far in advance are we going to wait until we figure out the last couple of home games? Um, because as of right now, we were not told about the game for this Friday being switched to Saturday until last Friday. This is causing a lot of problems for families that already had pre plans for the weekend that have had to shift. Um, a lot of people have younger children that also play on, play on Saturday, so then they're having to choose the whether to go to the high school game or the younger games, which is something that we've never had to worry about. Um, so how far in advance are we going to go? Are we, are we mandated to go week by week until we can know what our schedule is going to look like? Because people have been totally uprooting travel plans and other events because of this. Um, to try to avoid that, how far in advance are we going to know if senior night is going to be somewhere else or if the homecoming is going to be somewhere else? Um, just one thing I will say is the first game, not having our band and cheerleaders there was a very big impact. I know the boys said they don't particularly care about the band and cheerleaders until they said, well, it was very odd not having our cheerleaders there when the other top, other team had their cheerleaders there. And once I talked to the cheerleading coach, I said, well, you know, I know it was we're displaced, but they were not told about the game being switched until the Thursday night before that game. So to be expected, you tell someone Thursday evening that you're being moved from Friday to Saturday, there's no way that everyone will be able to make that schedule. Um, so they would have liked to have been there, but they just couldn't possibly make that adjustment. So I just want to make sure I just want to make sure you know how far in advance or have an idea of how far in advance we're going to be shifting like this. So that we're not telling people a week before, oh, by the way, next Saturday, this is going on. Um, because as of right now, we've been a, we've been told the time is to be determined. Tuesday. Um, so it's people hitting I know my weekends usually are very, very busy. I'm a travel bowler. I run tournaments. Most of what I do is on the weekends. I've had to cancel two events and cancel two travel plans because of this. I don't mind doing this because this is my son, but these are things that I either pay for or book for either a months or a year in advance. So if I'm going to have to cancel anything further than that, I would need to know at least a week or two possibly in advance. And I'm just speaking personally, I don't know what anyone else has going on. I just know my fall schedule is usually very, very hectic. Um, and my week is going to be free, where now it's not. Um, I don't mind shifting for my son. I will do whatever I need to do, but I've lost all my money from travel plans. I have not to lose all more if I, if I can avoid it, but um, finding out the way we've been finding out has been kind of an inconvenience for a lot of people. So, so, so the preference would be to make an early call. We can look at just having all home games away, um, which that's the only way we would be able to meet that request because you're dealing with something that you can't predict. Um, what I would look at doing in the instances of um, both the homecoming and also the senior night is trying to find a district where their Friday game was away, where I would at least try to make them Friday nights rather than Saturday afternoons for those two events. So I'll, I'll get started on, on looking at that now, and then I could probably give an update two weeks out. Um, I will um, have the AD, Dr. Hammond, and Coach Gore kind of do a huddle. Whereas if that's what they want to do, then we'll just do that now. Um, I'm just, I was trying to get a couple games on our own. If that's not realistic, I have no problem pivoting. It's costing us money too. Every time we go away, that's coming out of pocket. It's just, this is what we do. So I can honor that and, and have an update. Um, once I get more voices to see if that's ultimately where everybody would want to go, I have no problem trying to make that happen. Okay. Thank you. I, I don't know. I know they, they would like to be on their home field, but 
They also like to have a consistency. Understood. And right now, they don't have consistency. Well, this law on the schedule, that's the direction I'll be able to announce it. That's why I tried to do Wissa Hicken back to back, even though it's a Saturday. At least it's the same field. I'll try to find, I doubt that I'm going to get that for a Friday night because of schedule, but I'll try to figure that out. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I, um, I believe that when you talk to Coach Gun, Coach gave a list of possible schools on Fridays that weren't at the, they came up with that. So okay. I don't know if you dig that. Well, that'll make it. I hadn't looped them in at this point in right. time because we were still kind of yeah, digging. I'm just well, saying if that, that's not no, it will help. a resource. He's yeah, dated, yeah. I think he sent it to the ADM while ago, but if you want to take that out, that might be helpful. Oh. My conquest. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it may be. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Scott Reese, Elkins Park, uh, have an 11th grader football. Um, I have two comments, or and one's a question, but we kind of touched on it, I think, with the displacement of these players not having a home field. It's really, you know, we they're kind of just interacting with each other. It seems on the surface like, and they roll with it, right? But I know that there's an underlying current that is really feeling like they are homeless and they don't feel good about it. They are really affected by this in a lot of ways. And it has to do with, yeah, the color guard and the cheerleaders not being at their games, but it's also the fans, right? There has to be some method for getting the students to Wishaven, buses from the school, something. Because they're going, like last week, it was empty on our side, right? And they feel it. They don't have that experience of playing football with their classmates watching. And they need to have that. That is, these are their years and they're missing it. So we can provide um, buses without a doubt to sign up sheets and uh, have students be able to sign up and travel out. That's not a problem. So let's start this Saturday. Sure. I mean, can we get ahead of it? Sorry, I'm patting okay. it down slightly. Um, can we get ahead of it? Like Taryn said, I mean, this is really unfair to these kids, and this this should not have happened. It should have been avoided. Um, so I think. Being prepared and planning ahead is the least we can do for these kids to show them that we care and give them some respect. I mean, you know, as parent of a junior who's thinking about trying to play in college, like this is the year. This is and and seniors that this is their last year. I mean, for the taxes we pay in this community, this should not be happening. Um, I know you've heard it, um, so I will stop there, but I do just want to have follow up. I'm not sure if what the timeline that you referenced to novice, but I would like to see a timeline for the stadium uh -oh. build. Um, I want to know who's the project manager, what is the timeline, what are the dates? I want things done in advance. I want time buffered in. I'm a corporate event planner, so I deal with logistics for a living. So I understand what it takes to get this done. And we have to show these kids some respect. I mean, it's every other town in our district or the games that we play has beautiful football stadiums. Uh, 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 let me let you finish. Go ahead. That, I'll, I will stop there. <laughs> uh, so I, I just want to respond by saying that, one, I don't disagree at all. and. The whole reason that we're here right now is the last statement that you just made. Um, I was very transparent when I started here. And as most people know, I'm a product of this district. Graduated in 83, and I made that statement on numerous times that it's the same bill that I played on back then. That's why this was made a priority. So it's unfortunate. And I'm trying our best to make our students whole. Um, by no means uh, do I want them disrespected. It's really about respect, and that's why we're going through this process of what's going to probably end up being about a $10 million project, uh, which, again, is long overdue. There's not one thing that anyone has asked for 
that I have not been amenable for because I understand where we are. Um, at no time have I ever come across defensive because I know we have to own it. You're absolutely right. We should not be here, but I have to manage it. And that's what we're doing. If we need uh, student buses, that's a phone call. There'll be a sign up sheets based on the number of students that sign up. We will allocate the number of buses. We'll do that moving forward. There's not one thing that I've ever said that I would do that I have not done. So um, I hear you loud and clear. Want to acknowledge that. And I'll do everything within the power of the superintendent to make it a reality. And if we can just come up with a plan of how we tell the students there will be buses and make sure they know. So that's that it happen through the school. That'll be through announcements um, that will be made when they do their regular morning announcements. And that'll be set up um, where they can sign up through lunch. Um, so that won't be a problem. And however many we have, that's what we'll send. And then hopefully it'll be even more on the 14th. As I mentioned to Ms. Navas, in October, please come back out um, doing finance and facilities because that's when we will have an update to the best of our ability around what the projected timeline of the project will look like. Okay, great, thank you. Well, I have one more statement that I know some people, most people don't think about. So a lot of the juniors and seniors are in their very big year for recruitment. A lot of them pay for videographers to come out and highlight their games. Um, I know my son uses this, there are a couple of kids that use it out of their own money. They get charged a fee when the games are outside of our district and the further they have to go the more that they're charged so um most of them have to book this out a week or two in advance and it can get very costly and we were up in super bucks i believe i believe one of our games is in quaker town that's going to run a student probably about 200 bucks where if they were home it might have been about 90 dollars for the videographer to come out there to take that game um they're going to do it they have to do it for recruiting but I'm not sure if that's something that's kept in mind, but a lot of these young men are using their summer job money to pay for these calls. Um, and they're going to do it because they have to, but the further that FBI has to travel, the more they're going to pay or the more they're going to pay. Um, so that's something that upperclassmen have to worry about, not so more the freshmen and sophomores, but the upperclassmen are definitely paying for, for recruitment purposes. So I just want to put that out there. Yeah, I'll punctuate that. Or it's double. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's double. I mean, I don't have an answer. For no, that. I'm gonna let you know. I, it's something that, unless you're dealing with it, you're not. It's not a thought process. But a lot of the kids, I know for a fact, my son's friends, they're using their own money. They're not even bothering mom and dad because it can be a, a big expense. But you know, you see a kid saving up their their summer job money to take care of that, and to see that it's doubled for them because they feel like they have to do that. Um, it just kind of is disheartening as a parent. Like I cover it for my son, but every parent can't do that. So I, I'd rather see them not have to, that's be a worry for them. I, I, and I know you're just under your control. No, 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 not that. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm thinking more internally. Like things have gone high tech now where individuals want to just zero on, in on, on their child. We, we should be videotaping games and, and then. I mean, I was a coach. I know it. I coached on the high school and the college level. But this is extra. Is your right? But we should be filming, and coaches should know how to edit. I, I did it for every one of my athletes that I had, just based on the films that we took without having individuals, individuals having to come out for individuals. That's a separate conversation that I'm more than willing to have. If that's something that we need to address, um, it sounds like that may be an internal infrastructure where something could be enhanced that potentially is not occurring. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, do we have anyone on Zoom who would like to ask a question? Is 
Was that earlier? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, anyone else have any comments or questions before we adjourn the meeting? Okay, great. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. The meeting is adjourned.